Greetings and welcome to a new video about full wave rectifier. In this example, we will discuss the controlled full wave rectifier using thyristors. And we will see that we have a RL load in series in this example. We have two different conditions. We will discuss this in detail shortly. And this time we will talk about the discontinuous current mode, so DCM. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in MATLAB simulink simulations. What is given in this example is the following. The input is the VS is 200 sine 120 pi T. The frequency is 60 Hertz and our amplitude is 200 volts. The load will be a series RL, will be a 100 ohm resistor and 50 millihenry inductor. The delay angle we will use for these thyristors will be 55 degrees. So it will be then gate one and gate two. Those will be then active in the first cycle which is the positive cycle of the input signal and in the negative cycle of the input cycle gate 3 and gate 4 for the thyristor t3 and t4 will be activated and also we will calculate these parameters like the average load current average load voltage okay let's go to the solutions first we do the calculations of course and for that we first use the expression for the source voltage in the omega t domain instead of the time domain which was helpful so the VM here is then 200 volts and the omega is 120 pi radians per second. Let's see then as we have discussed the conduction mode first. Now the conduction mode depends on the operating frequency F, which is then our source frequency here. The load values, the resistor value and the inductor, maybe also a capacitor here. And also our delay angle we choose in, in order to activate these thyristors. The load current can become continuous when the delay angle alpha is smaller or equal to the theta and theta is what we call the impedance angle and that's then given by this formula arc tangent of the reactance omega l with, of this uh, inductor divided by the resistor so in summary again continuous mode when the delay angle alpha is equal to or smaller than the load impedance angle theta and that's then given again by this expression. But you can also have a discontinuous mode when the delay angle is larger than the load impedance angle theta. And that is then given by this expression. Now we know from the DC-DC converters like the DC-DC buck converter or the boost converter that we can have the discontinuous current mode or continuous current mode. And again, that depends on the current flow here in the load. So if the load current here is continuous, then we will have the CCM or the continuous current mode. And if it is not, then we have a DCM. All depends on the current flow through the inductor actually. And again, this is the formula for the load impedance angle. You see here the, again, the omega L over R in the arc tangent formula. And if you now calculate that for this situation where you have the 120 pi for our omega, 0 0.05 Henry's for the inductor, and the resistor is 100, you will get here 0 0.186 radians approximately, which is 10.7 degrees. Now this is, if you compare it with the angle, that means the alpha is larger than the theta. Thus we have, looking at these two conditions, discontinuous current mode or DCM. Now, how are the waveforms now for this situation? The input is always the same, which is a nice pure sine wave. We have here now again our peak value Vm, and it has now a period, 2 pi, using the uh, expression here, which we have in the omega t as our parameter. Now, when we activate the thyristor one and two, so the gate one and gate two are activated at alpha, then the output voltage will go up rapidly to that level of that source voltage, and then follow that and until that moment where you again have that energy released by the inductor, it will then come back again, like we have seen it in the RL load for the halfway rectifiers also. So it go from the alpha up to beta, but the load current here, you see that it is also doing the similar thing, but it is extending from alpha up to beta and it stays positive. So the load voltage can be negative between the pi and the beta, so it will be negative, but the current will stay positive. And that is because of the energy release by the stored energy of inductor. And again, the same process will happen for the T3 and T4, those two thyristors, it will happen then at pi plus alpha, so the second part of the 
cycle and then you have up to 2 pi and again also 2 pi plus beta. So this is exact same process in the first case. Again, the load current will do the exact same thing. So in summary here, T1 and T2 will conduct between alpha and beta and T3 and T4 will conduct between pi plus alpha up to 2 pi plus beta. So again, this, this distance is beta minus alpha. And you see here one thing we have discussed here, the DCM operation here, because the current here can be zero and become again positive, and there is a part again zero and then becomes positive. So that means it is DCM. Another example we'll discuss, uh, we'll see that the current here, the load current, and also of course the inductor current will never be zero, so it will always stay above the line here. So that means it is CCM. Okay, now for the DCM operation of the load current, the load current is then given by this expression. You see here now the situation. And again, this is really similar to what we have done for the half wave rectifier with the RL load. And it is now valid, this part only between the alpha and beta. And it will be zero between beta and pi plus alpha. That's also what you see here. And that repeats actually itself. So there is actually here a period of pi actually here. Okay. Again here the Z is given by the impedance, which is then the absolute value of the, uh, these two uh, values of the components, given by this expression. Again the theta and the time constant tau, which is for this series resistor and the inductor load. We also need to determine here the extinction angle, we have also discussed in the previous examples, also in the half wave rectifiers, the beta. That is an important parameter because that is not known yet. We know the alpha, that's just given, but we don't know, know the beta yet. How do we know that? Now you see here in the plot, also in the green plot, that the alpha, at that value, the load current is zero, but also at beta. So we can say the expression here will be zero also at the value beta. So omega t is beta will produce zero current. That means we can set this to equal to zero, evaluate it at beta. So everywhere where you see the omega t, here and there, two places, you replace that by beta. This is omega tau, which is of course a different parameter. Now you can divide out now the vm over z, that will then result in this expression. And now we need to solve this, that is actually the job. So if you solve that, you know all the values like the omega and the tau and also the alpha, and of course also the theta, you can solve this, you can do that of course using a solver, and then you have your value for beta, which is in radians. Now from the given uh, information here, we can calculate now that the Z is 101.8 ohms, which is just using the values here. Again the theta, which is 0.186 radians, and tau here will be then 0.5 milliseconds, so 0.05 over 100. Okay. Let's continue and take this here together, and this is the summary of the results here so far. Let's now look at the, way, uh, the expression of the current here, so substitute everything here, 200 and 101.8, etc. Then you have this expression. We can now reduce this to a more convenient form by dividing out this 200 over 101.8, and also do other parts here, and you have this expression which is only valid between alpha and beta. Now. We now can continue in order to calculate the other parameters, and for that first we need the beta. So, but we know also that we can calculate average load current using this formula. That is the general expression between the alpha and beta, and since this is of course a period of pi, so instead of 2 pi, because the period has now decreased by a factor of 2, we integrate between pi, I mean the alpha and beta, but we divide by the pi and not O by 2 pi. Now we know the expression here, that's this expression. But we first need to know, as said before, the beta. So we solve again this expression as we have seen before, that's actually this expression. Now when you do that, solving will give you now 3.328 radians. So you substitute that here, you have also your alpha in radians, you have your beta in radians, you also have this expression which is there. And that will be done in the calculator or in the solver, and that will result here in 990.7 milliamps, so almost 991 milliamps. But you can also do that in this situation in a different way, in a much faster way, if you know the alpha, if you know the beta, and your peak value of your input source voltage and your resistor, and that will also result in the same value. So it is, of course, perfect to go for this, but this is the proof how you can also do that 
using the integration. So this is much faster. Okay. Now, once we know the average load current, the average load voltage, which is question B, is now pretty simple using Ohm's law. So we can say, just multiply this by R, and then you have actually lost the R here, and you calculate that in a similar form. So you actually do that 100 times, and you get here 99.07 volts. Okay. So it's also perfect. So we have now the question A and B. And let's bring the de uh, details here together, and also the expression for the current. Load current. Now go to the next one, which is the RMS load current, the question C. Again, it's, uh, the expression we will use, which is the definition of the RMS value, the square root of 1 over the pi, and then you integrate from alpha up to beta, and you square the expression for the load current. And that will result in this expression. You see it is quite complicated to do that by hand, so again, you can use a solver. So if you do that, you get here one point. 249, so almost 1.25 amps. Is there also a better way or a much faster way, I must say? Uh, there is also a, another faster way, so this is of course not derived here, but you can use also this where you see the amplitude of your source voltage, the impedance, the beta and alpha, and also the theta is here given. So if you all know these, you can also calculate that without going through this integration. And when you do that, you see here the values, I substitute everything in here, you get also 1.249 amps, so this is also perfect. So this is a tip you can use, but if you prefer to use that, this also will get, produce the same result. The RMS load voltage is then calculated again in a similar form as we have done for the RMS load current. Now we need to have the load voltage expression, which is then VO, again between the alpha and beta, really similar expression, you see only the changes here is the VO instead of IO. What is VO? VO is merely actually just VS, because if you look at between alpha and beta, you follow this red line. So the blue line will be exactly as the red line. So you can just copy that and take actually the expression here in omega t domain. That's shown here, uh, completely apart, and that will result in 130.0 volts. And again, is there a better way or a much faster way? Yes, there is. For this situation, for the full wave rectifier with RL load, that will be then this. You see again VM. The beta is appearing and the alpha, and then you can calculate here the value for the output or the load RMS. And that will result here in the 130.0 volts again. It's also perfect. So there are shortcuts like these formulas given here in the blue and the red box, but you can also go through the expression using the integrals. Okay, now taking these together also, let's now go to the question E and F. For absorbed power, we need to look at the RMS load current, which is from question C, and we need to use our pure resistive part of our load, which is this resistor 100 ohms. So we know the RMS load current, so which is 1.249, we square that, times 100 will be then 156 watts. So it was easy, we know the RMS current, we can just right away calculate this. How about the power factor? Power factor is defined by the load power divided by the apparent power, so this is actually the true power divided by the apparent power, that is the official definition. We need to know the apparent power, which is the source voltage RMS times the source current RMS. Now the source current is equal to the load current, because it is a series connection every time where the T1 and T2 are active, and T3 and T4 are active. So the source current IS will be always the load current. And it will be then here in series, so that means also the same value as we have be done before. The source voltage RMS is just the peak value of the source voltage divided by the square root of 2. This is the familiar formula after do, doing the similar expression here. It will result in 141.4 volts. If you take this together, you will have now an apparent power of 177 volt amperes. Now, take this here in the formula and also the value from question E for our absorbed load power. That will give us here 0 0.88 or 0 0.881 as the power factor. Okay, now we have everything. Let's now go to the simulation results. First, we we'll start with the pulse generator settings for our delay angle, because we need to set the delay angles here for the gate one up to gate four. Now, this is the circuit in Simulink. You see here all the details, the T1 up to T4, the source voltage, etc. So I will first discuss the pulse generator, which will activate the gates of T1 and T2, so gate one and gate two. And also we'll discuss 
Well, shortly also the pulse generator settings for T3 and T4 for the tyrosters T3 and T4. So first this one, how does it work? How can we set this? Now if you click on this pulse generator, you can now apply some amplitude to activate that. I just chose here arbitrary 5. This is the period you need to use because that is the frequency. So 1 over the frequency, 1 over 60. I select here a very small pulse width. In this case, it is just 1% of the complete period. You can also take 2%, but not really, not, not too wide, otherwise it will be uh, too long active. There is also a phase delay you need to calculate, and that is given by this expression. So the phase delay for T1 and T2 is given by alpha over the 360 degrees and over the frequency. Now we have 55 degrees, and you do actually this expression, and now you get here 2.5546 milliseconds. That's actually also what you see here. So you need to type here, here in seconds and not in degrees. So that's, that's why we need to use, use this formula. It's also shown here. Now for the other pulse generator, T3 and T4, that is actually coming up here. Again, a similar amplitude, period, and also the pulse with just 1%. And now I need to shift this by 180 degrees, because that's actually the similarity here. So again, the same formula, just 180 degrees shifted, and that will result in 10.88 milliseconds. Again, that's shown here. Okay. Now we go to the Simulink circuit results, because we have calculated something, so just verify that. We have here 99.09 .09 volts as the average load voltage. We have calculated 99.07 volts. It's very close actually, just maybe rounding off errors. You see here the RMS load voltage, which is 130. In our case, we had 130.0 volts, so also uh, exact same. We have here the average load current, which is in this case 9, 0.9908 amps, and we had 0.9907 amps, so again, very close to each other, just maybe rounding off errors. And RMS load current is exactly as we have calculated, which is then 1.249 amps. So this is indeed as we have calculated, this is perfect. Let's also look first at the Simulink plot of the pulse generators, which will activate this G1 up to G4. You see here the pulse generator for uh, T1 and T2, and the other one is for T3 and T4. The red one you see actually when it comes up, this is actually coming up at this time with 0.002546 seconds. And that is also what we have calculated for the setting of our pulse generators using the formula. We have discussed this in the previous slide. The other one, which is for the pulse, uh, for the T3 and T4, the other pulse, again, similar form, you see again the time 10.879 milliseconds, which is then very close to what we have here. So indeed, it is doing the that, and it also, Pulsing in a very short time and then coming back after again 1 over 60 seconds, which is our period in this case. Okay, let's now go look at the simulation plot in the Simulink. This is now again our source voltage, the red one. The light blue one is our output voltage or load voltage, and the load current is given in green. Okay. Let's look at the first label here, which is the load voltage label, which is at 0.002546, which is our alpha, this one. And that is, if you calculate that, so you convert this second, because the line here, the horizontal axis is given in seconds, this time. So you need to use the formula omega times this time, and it will be the 120 pi radians per second times the, what you see here. That will result in 0 0.96 radians, which is also our alpha. So this is indeed as we have it. And the other one, which is then the beta, which is this label, and that is then calculated using this 0.008828. That's also shown here. That will then be beta of 3.328 radians, which is also what we have. So it is also perfect. You see also the same things in this green plot. So at exactly the same time, you see here that the load current is now getting to zero value. But the blue line, where we actually discussed this also here, is already getting below the zero level, which is negative. So that is the effect, again, of the stored magnetic energy in the inductors. So everything is correct and according to specifications. So we actually verified this also here in the Simulink plots. All right, what's our example? Considering the full wave rectifier controlled by thyristors and having an RL load.
If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.